All right, so I've been basically drawing characters in 2D with these big, like, black stylized eyelashes for the longest time. And now that I'm getting back into 3D, I realized, even though it looks really good with the, you know, the whole style and still in general, I realized it's pretty hard to, like, rig it right to make it, like, fully, like, functional since normally, you know, eyelashes can just, like, kind of attach to the eyelid and that's all you really need. Just rig it like that. But, of course, since I want to do all this stylistic stuff, I need to find a way to do it. And I haven't really found a good tutorial on how to do it exactly how I want to do it. Um, so I'm basically just kind of making one. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, basically I just have this character here. And I've uh, been dealing with this whole issue for a while now. So I feel like it's kind of close, but I'm also kind of making this video as like a... Um, like a, a little like a alarm to kind of say like, oh, I need some like extra little help with this because I'm not really a professional um, Blender user as much. So I probably don't know the exact perfect way to do this, but so the first thing I'll do is just hide the, the rig and show you what the actual like eyelash I'm working with is because it's decently big, decently subdivided just so you can get a lot of like minor variations. Um, but pretty much all I did was just kind of take the uh, like the rim of the eyelid and kind of extrude it out and just kind of pull it into place. So it's not really like that crazy of a thing to model, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's a big basis of what I'm working with. And there was like, when basically it was impossible to uh, read it correctly on its own just by doing like automatic weights or even just like weight painting. Cause no matter what, it, I needed to, it to like fold into itself. Um, so basically what I did, I just kind of went on the blender forums and asked for some like tips or whatever and they gave the idea to like use bendy bones so you can see here i have a bendy bone set up that kind of curves around um and yeah you can just basically grab any of these points to well normally you would but i have drivers attached um so yeah that's the the main point of it uh and that of course just gets pulled down at a certain rate because of the drivers thanks to the the main rigify rig uh, eyelid controller thingy um, and that by the end of it creates a even though it's kind of like deforming the, the brow for some reason uh, it just kind of like creates like a decent sort of like shape to make it look pretty nice when you're looking at it from afar it doesn't really need to be perfect and probably still gonna adjust some of the, the weight painting of it a little bit just to make it look even better but I feel like it's good enough for cartoony expressions I guess um, but yeah I mean if if you already know how to set up that kind of a thing, then you know you can basically just leave. But I'll try and describe at least a little bit of how to I got there, even though I'll also uh, post in the description the the main sort of um, tutorial I used to kind of get this across. Uh, basically, all it is is just kind of like a a string of armatures, obviously set to uh, bendy bones, and of course subdivided as well and Control S, Control Alt S to scale down so I can actually see the, the balls. Um, and upgrade links to have more segments in them. And then you just uh, Control S to get the cursor there and then add another bone. Just keep doing that for every little bone. And then what you can do with that is make them scale correctly as well. Pull them back down. And then you can just uh, go into pose mode and add some bone constraints. These say uh, stretch two and then copy the armature and then whatever the bone is, which is bone four. I don't think it actually connects to the, the first one, which is just kind of a annoying, but I'm just kind of used to, you know, connecting the entire thing together. So yeah, whenever you move this around, it tugs along that thing. And you also get uh, unparent it from the actual bone itself, which it is actually already done, so. But yeah, pretty much just do that, and I even go into post mode. And just do that, and with all these bones, and you can actually just kind of play with them. Or shift S to hit there, add one, and then the same thing over again. It should just kind of deform in much more like kind of fluid way than a normal bone, as bendy bones do. Is that bone five? Yeah, it is. So yeah, now you can just pull all that into shape. And then of course I just kind of 
added a custom shape so it, it's easier to look at. Let's have an empty sphere. And that's basically it, just kind of following the shape of the, the eyelash around the edges. So just putting that around. And then I also, uh, just because I wanted to keep the shape of the bones kind of adhering to the, the shape of the eyelash, even though it probably doesn't actually matter, I cut off these bones connected to each other because they would kind of like loop around because they're all bendy together. But yeah, apart from that, it's just pretty standard to kind of do that for this entire ring. Um, and of course you have to map the, the right uh, weights together and the weights are pretty much the most important part just because, you know, this definitely wasn't good enough on its own. I really had to like kind of just like put it into place, make sure all the drivers were in place um, and go into the, the weight painting and just kind of mess with it all. So you can see, I'll go into weight paint mode and like the top left, you can see like this is like the lid. So basically what it happens is the, the extra eyelid arm or eyelash armature kind of just pulls the top down so it kind of like folds down farther than where the it's actually attached to the um, the eyelid, and the eyelid is controlling like a lot of space still. So it's still technically attached to the eyelid at the bottom, but at the top it's connected to the eyelash rig. So you can see like this is the all the weights I put in for the, the top of the eyelash. It's kind of it's like not even really something I can like fully describe in like a concrete form because I feel like it's gonna it's gonna vary a lot depending on like what type of eyelash you have. But for me, this was just kind of like how it ended up. It's probably not even really perfect. Um, yeah. So going to the, the drivers next, because that's where a lot of the find variables are as well. So basically, I have uh, the drivers here. And it's pretty simple, just, um, you know, copying the, the variable of the, the main, like, uh, eyelid control. And just kind of extending it, it extends it down a little bit farther and then a little bit out. As you can see, this is the Y variable, so it kind of goes 1.2. So it's a little bit farther down than the eyelid, the eye, yeah, the eyelid control. And then for the Z value, it's just a tiny little bit farther. Um, but of course, then after I painstakingly went through every single little control um, and added their own little drivers and just kind of ad libbed it until I got it right. Um, I really just uh, like realized that it's kind of useless that way because if I wanted to make, for example, like a, a sort of like a slanted eye like this, um, and then I also wanted to control the, the eye control and wanted to like move it like up or down, then it would completely like dislodge the the whole like point of it where it wasn't really pretty anymore. So I then had to add the extra variables for that, um, and of course on its own. Uh, even if, yeah, even if I grabbed the, um, the eye control when it was like a d in a default state, it would pull down the eyelid control, which you'd think would work, but I guess it doesn't affect its local position. So like you can see here, it's technically in zero, 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 but it's also deformed a little bit because of the, the eye rotation. So I actually had to add an extra variable in the driver to edit edit its position for the the, eye, the common eye, like the uh, directional thingy. So it also kind of edit that a little bit. But then I also realized that's not even like that good either because it just like, there's like so many like little things you have to worry about. Like if I wanted the, the um, like I said, this like the slanted eye alongside the this controller, it wouldn't really like fit perfectly most of the time. Um, and even if I, if even it like did work for some reason, if I ever wanted to like kind of make like a sort of like happy like kind of closed eye expression like this, it still wouldn't work because usually in like you know stylistic sort of style, um, the eyelid or the eyelash would kind of like curve upwards and around like this, uh, and that would just not be possible with this because I couldn't I can't like physically edit the variable uh, on my own. There's like no editing I can do because the driver is like limiting the position that I can move it. So I instead uh, decided to go against that whole principle and just kind of map these drivers actually to the uh, the main thing itself. I put in this thing before to to like um, like be the control, but I then realized I actually wanted it to just be the uh, 
like the main control, the top control itself. So this is the actual thing that I ended up doing. So I can, I'll put it on the eyes thingy so it's a little bit brighter. So what I then did was uh, I just kind of um, just deleted all these drivers. I guess I have to do it in different mode, I guess. They try, I guess it, delete drivers. I don't know why it's not in that section. So yeah, this one's completely free to move now. And then I went through each of these and just edited the variables. So I just went in, got rid of the secondary variable because that's kind of useless now, delete the expression part. Um, and then I just went into the rig and just typed in the 002, which I think is the, actually, no, that's the, the one for the main eye itself. This one is actually 004. And so yeah, I literally just went through 004. It's got to find the eyelash control. Yeah, control L. And then copy and paste it through every single. Not there. I just kind of paste it in. So now you can see it's kind of deforming for that. Did I mess it up on this one, I guess? Yeah, that's probably. It's only editing one position. Oh, yeah, there we go. Always got to be perfectly expressed. But yeah, so it literally just went through and did every little bit for every little variable. And then that basically made it so I can manually animate the eye, which is a lot less automatic and a lot less like impressive, I guess. But it's really like just really the most useful because I really don't want to have to like make all these parameters. Like I was thinking of like using like um, the parameters for like having like a, a, like a little property that I can edit. Like a, like a one would be like, you know, make it like a, the upward turn sort of eyelash and then zero would be like the downward turn eyelash. And it's just like, I'd rather just manually animate it all. So, I mean, I can probably just show for the now because now when I turn it down, it's, if I get it about the same place, it's still pretty much the same. And then when I uh, go down even further, you can see it's still like, I can just even like edit it even more specifically if I wanted to be like, kind of like really off the side or whatever, it's just so much better and a lot easier to use. Um, and of course, even though I have to like, if I remove the eye, you can see this is what happened before that I had to, I can just manually move it down if I ever need it. So yeah, that's basically where I'm at now. And it's definitely a lot better because I can just, you know, put everything into place as I need it to. So like if I wanted to like get to like this stage of like the upper turned eyelash, mm -hmm. then I could just move this up a little bit. Now kind of like create like the volume in the, the eyelash. I would kind of create that kind of like stylized look a little bit, at least with some editing, of course, because not everything's perfectly aligned right now, but that's how it is in the, in the main model at least. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, yeah, that's, functionally the entire thing um there are some like other things that i thought i think i could have done where like it, it just also seems pretty complicated and like probably not perfect either but i could even like have armatures that follow the exact um edges of the lines so like when they point out like this they would have like an armature kind of pointing out like that and then when it closes it would kind of like fit itself normally but then i it kind of like have to still find some way to make it upturned or whatever and like obviously everyone else wants to use like shape keys for these kinds of things. Um, it also just seems like a lot of work to like kind of like piece together every little like possible movement. I definitely prefer having the, the rig to kind of just mess with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. This uh, just seems functional enough for now. But yeah, I definitely don't feel like it's so perfect that I, I can't imagine like a better way of doing it. Um, I definitely feel like there's has, there has to be like some sort of way to get it exactly as I want, but you know, it's does the job for now. <laughs> and hopefully it's putting this video out there will actually like kind of inspire someone to at least tell me how to do it right. If someone's like already figured it out somewhere and I just don't know about it, really want that information because I'm going to do this for basically every single one of my characters because that's how I ended up designing them. And I think it looks good, so I'm gonna try and make it work. But yeah, that's 
basically it. So help me out or use my like ideas better. 